Thank you, Tom, and to the Ford Hall Forum, Northeastern University. I'm, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm smitten by the size of the audience uh, come to hear Professor Chomsky tonight. I'm just so delighted to see that expression of, uh, of interest in the news, that, uh, that, that statement that you're making by, by coming here tonight. When, when I was a very young reporter with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, I remember being in the production area on one of the major current affairs programs for radio. It was back in the 1970s. Now, I was brand new, and I was being shown around, and everyone was being very polite to me and speaking in very soft voices, as you do when you're gently trying to integrate someone into something new. And one of the senior producers slammed down the receiver of his telephone, stood up, and said, all right. It was a sort of 1970s version of, yes. Everyone turned to him, and he smiled like this trophy fisherman. And he said, we've got him. And there was a pause of expectation in the room, just like this one now. We've got Chomsky, he said. <laughs> and a sigh of satisfaction in the room. Now, I was a very young reporter. I knew the name, but being the ace cub reporter wannabe that I was, I knew I had to find out a little bit more about the man. So I thought, well, that's simple. I'll just read what he's written. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thirty years ago, that was a full-time job, even today, just keeping up with the uh, writing of Noam Chomsky is a full-time job. He has written over 70 books, over a thousand articles. He writes about linguistics, philosophy, intellectual history, contemporary issues, international affairs, and U.S. foreign policy. Mr. Chomsky was born in Philadelphia. His undergraduate and graduate years were spent at the University of Pennsylvania, where he received his Ph.D. in linguistics in 1955. While he was a junior fellow at Harvard, he completed his doctoral dissertation entitled Transformational Analysis. It later formed part of a more extensive work called The Logical Structure of Linguistic Theory. Noam Chomsky joined the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1955 and in 1961 was appointed full professor in the Department of Linguistics and Philosophy. From 66 to 76, he held the Ferrari P. Ward Professorship of Modern Languages and Linguistics. In 1976, he was appointed Institute Professor, a position he holds today. In the spring of 1969, he delivered the John Locke Lectures at Oxford in January 70, the Bertrand uh, Russell Memorial Lecture at Cambridge University in 72, the Nehru Memorial Lecture in New Delhi. In fact, we were just exchanging remarks behind uh, the curtain here about a trip that he just completed in, uh, uh, in India. Uh, he is on the move, perhaps more than most reporters you'll ever talk to. Professor Chomsky has received dozens dozens of honorary degrees from universities on four continents. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the National Academy of Science. In 1988, he was awarded the Kyoto Prize in Basic Science. That is the Japanese equivalent of the Nobel Prize. He has received the Helmholtz Medal, the Dorothy Eldridge Peacemaker Award, and the Ben Franklin Medal in Computer and Cognitive Science. Now, my sister is a speech pathologist, and she's particularly good at her job. So she understands Noam Chomsky on the topic of linguistics. I explained I was having a little bit of trouble with that. So she said she could put it to me in rather simple terms. She said that almost everybody that you meet who goes to school learns something as a result of the way that Noam Chomsky changed the way our education system introduces us to language. Now, what, introduce, what intrigues me as a journalist about Mr. Chomsky's mind is what he writes, what he says about power, about the way in which power is used, about the way that it is abused, and the way it is often excused. About this time, a year or so ago, he was actually talking about retiring. I don't know if it was, in fact, September 11th that kept him at his keyboard, and, but I can say that this nation and this world is a much better place for having his arguments and his ideas made as available as they are. So on the topic of the emerging framework of world power, I ask you to welcome Professor Noam Chomsky. Uh, it's uh, widely held that the post-September 11th world will never be the same. 
Uh, and there's no doubt that 9-11 uh, that was uh, an event of historic importance. Uh, however, it's less clear uh, how it's going to affect the uh, emerging framework of world power. Uh, personally, I'm rather skeptical. Uh, I suspect that we may discover down the road uh, that it has uh, established more firmly tendencies that are already uh, underway and are rather deep-rooted. Well, to clarify the basis for that judgment, it's worthwhile to think about a few background issues. Uh, in particular, two questions, and I'll start with those. Uh, first is, why is it a historic event? Uh, and the second is, why did it happen? Uh, I should say that these questions themselves often elicit uh, highly irrational reactions, as if uh, seeking explanations and trying to place events in a historical context uh, amounts to uh, what's sometimes called rationalization uh, or implies that the victims uh, deserve to be murdered. That's very common, but it's so outlandish that it's hardly necessary to comment, and I'll put it aside. Uh, it's a comment about the people who raise the questions. Other than that, not worth discussing. Uh, so first, why is it a historic event? Well, the answer to that is simple. Uh, it's because of the choice of victims, uh, not the nature of the crime. That much should be obvious to anyone who's familiar with the uh, record of the past several hundred years, which it should be unnecessary to review. Uh, however, it may be useful, I think it is, to listen to some uh, voices of the traditional victims uh, reacting to September 11th. So it takes a Latin America particularly important to us. Our shadow's been cast there very heavily for a long time. Uh, September 11th atrocities were very harshly condemned, as they were virtually everywhere. But quite often, uh, uh, with a recollection of uh, their own suffering. So in Central America, uh, perhaps the leading research journal is the uh, Journal of the Jesuit University in uh, Managua. Uh, they described uh, the events of, they said the events of September, September 11th could be described as Armageddon, but added that we have suffered our own Armageddon uh, in slow motion, referring to the atrocities of the 1980s, which was an international terrorist attack uh, condemned by the World Court, as you know, and it would have been condemned by the Security Council if the United States hadn't vetoed it. Uh, and that was more serious than September 11th. Tens of thousands of people killed, the country wrecked, it may never recover. Uh, so yes, this may be Armageddon, but it's not new to us. Uh, in Panama, uh, a journalist, uh, a radio journalist, uh, like others, bitterly condemned the September 11th atrocities, but added that we're familiar with it. Uh, he referred to the uh, attack, the bombing of the barrio Chorillo uh, in November 19, December 1989, uh, when uh, uh, the United States invaded Panama in that one bombing, according to Panamanian sources, uh, several thousand people were killed in the poor barrio. Since it's our atrocities, we don't investigate, and nobody really knows the details, but it was certainly serious. Uh, the, uh, that invasion, that, that was Operation Just Cause, uh, undertaken by George Bush the first in order to kidnap a disobedient thug uh, who was brought to the United States and tried and is now in jail, uh, sentenced for crimes that he committed uh, almost entirely on the CIA payroll. Well, they remember that. Uh, and others uh, refer to Operation Condor and the atrocities in the Southern Cone, again, international terrorism because of the U.S. involvement, crucial involvement. Uh, and others speak of the international terrorist wars of the 1980s in Central America that left uh, hundreds of thousands dead, uh, millions of refugees and orphans, uh, four countries ruined. Uh, there were international Gallup polls taken after September 11th. Uh, con condemnation of the atrocities was near universal. On the other hand, it was, there were very few places where there was much support for a military reaction. Some places, in, uh, apart from a few places, it rarely went above about 30%, rather uh, legal means. 
the kind of means that Nicaragua attempted to pursue but failed because they ran up against uh, a more powerful force, namely us, that wouldn't permit legal means.